It's time for this week's episode of Brandon Sports Talk, featuring in-depth interviews from those who are trending in the world of athletics. And now, here's the host of Brandon Sports Talk, Brandon Pate. Welcome back to Brandon Sports Talk. In today's episode, I have the privilege to interview the Wittenberg assistant track and field coach, Coach Jesse Juarez. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing good. Can you talk about how you knew that you wanted to get into coaching in college? Yeah, so it wasn't immediately obvious. Um, when I went into school, I got a degree in graphic design. I was more into the arts and Sometime around the end of my junior year, I realized that I love the sport a little bit more um, than just competing as an athlete. So that's when I decided I wanted to kind of test it out and see if coaching was right for me. Um, it was just the relationship I had with my coach. He was such a great mentor and almost like a second father to me. So I wanted to be able to maybe be like a big sister or an aunt or a mom to a kid in the future. So. Of course, what was it like competing in track and field on the college level? Um, it was way different than high school for me. I went to a very small high school where sports, um, specifically a sport like track and field, was not really um, popular. And we just did whatever at practice. And I really don't think I reached my potential in high school because when I got to college and got some real training, that's when I started really finding out what my events were and breaking some records. Of course, what events did you did you go in college to compete in? So in high school, I was a, more of a sprinter, but in college, I became more of a distance athlete. When, um, when I first arrived, I was still a sprinter, but then I made a bet with my coach about running an 800, and then I ended up being good at it. And that was just the end of being a sprinter and intro into becoming a distance runner. Of course, what was it like, obviously, in college being a more of a distance runner? Um, I picked up cross country in college, which is weird. Usually, you don't just decide to do cross country, and especially in college. It's not everyone's favorite sport. Um, and, and even in my college career, admittedly, I did not enjoy it that much, but I knew that it would make me a better 800 runner. Um, so I don't, I don't know if that answers the question. Of course, how is it like getting into college coaching after coming out of college and getting your first job at the community college level? Yeah, coaching at the community college level was definitely different. Um, a lot of athletes are... Um, in some way funneled through community colleges with the intention of going to um, a bigger school afterwards. Uh, it was weird. Right when you get to know a kid, they're just like gone. And that was a weird concept for me. I realized that coaching at a community college was not really for me, I don't think. Um, but I got to work with some phenomenal athletes. Um, hopefully I get to see that type of talent again in my future. But we had some kids there that were really fast. In fact, um, one of them, his name was Terrell McNeil. He was so fast. He had the school record there in the 100 dash, but it got beat by Andre de Grasse, who actually was second to Usain Bolt in one of the previous Olympics. So that's the type of level of athlete that was there. It was just nuts. It was crazy. Of course, what was that like, obviously getting to coach him and then obviously see him go on to the Olympic level? Um, he never, well, so Terrell never got on to the Olympic level but he um, certainly could have um, if he, if he wasn't exactly always up for being at practice, but he definitely was a super talented uh, sprinter and, and I think also football player. Um, but it was, there was a young lady there who, um, she had obviously a different coach after me, but when she went to her four years school, she progressed on to be a champion at the division one level in the 200. And she went to the Olympic trials, I believe in the 100 and 200. Um, and, and she was a, you know, it was cool to see her progress and 
from a distance after I left there. I was only there for a year. Um, but I still in the back of my head, and if she ever sees this interview, <laughs> I still think she was a 400 meter runner as much as she disliked running it. She just had so much power in that race. Of course, how is it like going to Mo Montgomery University? Uh, Muskingum? Mm -hmm. is that right? um, so I went to Muskingum for grad school. Um, in my first year of coaching, I most young coaches start out going right into grad school. I took a year to go try something different somewhere else to see if coaching was really for me. Um, and then when I felt like, yes, I want to continue with this, it's kind of just a byproduct to, of coaching to get your master's degree so that you can apply for some bigger positions down the road. Um, that's something they like to see. So um, getting to Mustangum, I really was introduced to some event areas I had never coached before. Um, and that's kind of how I became more of a jumps coach, even though I was a distance athlete. Um, and thankfully I had a phenomenal mentor at Muskingum who he is still there. His name is Jake Gleason, um, who was patient enough to um, give me some freedom to learn as a coach, but also guide me in, in how to coach the jumping events. So I'm really thankful for him. Of course, as a coach, what was that transition like? Obviously, as you said, as an athlete, you were more of a distance runner, and now you're more of a jumps coach. It was really hard, and it still has its days where um, it is a, continually a challenge, because uh, clearly I, I did not do, um, I was not a pole vaulter, I was not a high jumper, or long or triple jumper, and nor can I do those things. I'm not athletic in that way, just running was all I had. Um, so for sure in the beginning, it posed a lot of bigger challenges because I didn't fully understand the events. Um, and that, and that was, that was hard. Um, it took a lot of looking at film in slow motion and then realizing that like, I can look at it in fast motion now and I can see things, but that was not the case many years ago. <laughs> Of course, how is it like going to Adrian College to get to work on their track and field program? Yeah, so um, Adrian was an interesting school, very, very big into athletics of every single sort of athletics team you could think of. Um, it was a different experience there um, in the sense that I it was the first time I ever coached javelin. Um, that was weird. Um, and another first for me was I actually had a private lesson with an athlete in discus and I knew nothing about discus so I had to really do my research to make sure that I could you know coach this athlete in a one-on-one -on -one session and I learned a lot from that um, but coaching there was um, probably the first time I had the most responsibility I would say as a coach um, really just had to figure out like what my philosophy was and what I believe in and what were some things that were taught to me that I needed to, that I wanted to carry on and continue to do. Of course, during your time at Wisconsin University, what was that like getting to coach there? Yeah, I would say my fondest memories come from coaching at Wisconsin South. Um, when I, I remember, I will never forget looking at the the roster that they had when I was applying for the job and just thinking in my head, like, Oh, these girls can, can can accomplish this and these guys can do this. You just imagine what you can do to help athletes. And the biggest one that I saw was they had a pretty strong group of 400 meter runners there. And I felt like what I believed in, in my training, um, I felt like it would transfer really well to them and I could get them to the national level. Like we could break their school record and do things. That was a crazy first year there because the same four girls who had been there the year before I got there, um, who had not broken a school in a four by four, they broke it by 12 seconds, which is astronomical. And um, kudos to Jada, one of the athletes I was coaching because her belief in that relay was was huge for, for us to go from being just a no-name team to um, our first time at nationals we were sitting next to Wisconsin Lacrosse, Wisconsin Eau Claire, and Wartburg, who between the three of them had always been a national champion in that event. And here we were in that race with them in the fast heat. And 
um, it was it was terrifying to watch even <laughs> so, but it was so cool to see those girls really believe in something that maybe maybe they were just really unsure of before. That was for me a super fond memory seeing um, a form of tradition formed there in the sense of we have some really good 400 runners. During your time at Roanoke College, what were some of your accomplishments on the Roanoke College side? Yeah, um, so Roanoke was an interesting experience for me. Um, I got to work with um, a girl in high jump who was the most calm personality that you could ever be around. Um, her name was Mara Briggs. Uh, Mara had had a, a rough start in college in regards to the types of coaches that she had she had had to, I guess, and put up with before I got there. Um, there were just some things that she had a lot of distrust um, initially, like in 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 her coach, which was me. Um, but as she started to realize that um, I do things a little bit differently and we can get to that next level, she really started to to, to trust herself as a high jumper. And so um, she did really well, went to nationals, got fourth at nationals, um, which was huge for her. And um, I had some other phenomenal athletes there too. In fact, when I first got there, Rona College had zero pole vault poles, zero, they had none. And we, I don't know how much money we spent in poles, but we, we bought like 20 or 15 poles or something. And um, we went from one pole vaulter to I think eight pole vaulters. And so it was really cool to see that group grow. And one of those girls uh, was a conference champion a couple of times. So it was, it, it was a cool experience for sure. Of course, how is it like leaving Rona College to go to Witt Wittenberg where you're at now? Yeah, so this is an interesting transition because there's a gap in my coaching career there. Um, I had about two to three years there where I got out of coaching and was a personal trainer. So I, I got really, really big into CrossFit, really big into Olympic weightlifting and thought that maybe I wanted to try something new. Um, so I had a small business going for a little while um, just as an independent contractor renting out of a gym. Um, and then, of course, COVID came around and COVID hit and a lot of my clients um, I couldn't work with because the gym had shut down temporarily. So, um, you know, did the whole thing. And, and then now, um, as I, you know, was coming back out of that whole COVID pandemic era, I was like, well, maybe I want to get back into coaching. And uh, the head coach here, I've known him for a long time. Um, and I thought, well, I'll reach out. I'll put my application in and see what happens. And so here I am. <laughs> Of course, how is that like, obviously, taking that to your gap and getting into personal training? Yeah, so, so what was it like having it during those years, you mean? Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. It was weird. Um, when track and field is your life every single day, I mean, literally, if you're a track coach watching this, you know that you, you're all day is track and field. Um, but it was weird not having that every day in my life. Um, I got little snippets of it. So I had a few one-on-one -on -one clients who were high school track athletes trying to compete at another level. So I taught them in a different way in weightlifting um, to help them become stronger. But it, it was definitely weird. And my husband told me, um, if you don't shut up about track and field, I don't know. He's like, you're driving me nuts. You always talk about track and field. Why do you stop coaching? And so that's kind of what got me back into thinking, oh, maybe I need to go back into coaching. Was that transition like getting back into coaching after being gone for two years? Very hard. Um, so the first time I had ever coached pole vault was when I was at Roanoke. And just as I was understanding the event, I pulled myself out of coaching and then just re reinserted myself over here at Wittenberg. And so I had to, there were a lot of things that I had really forgotten about, um, drills that I liked, different uh, different ways that I like to conduct practice um, that now have like slowly over this past year all come back to me. And um, it's been, yeah, it, it's, it was hard. It's been, it was, it was an interesting transition. Um, once you're out of coach mode, it's, it's so different. Um, so it was hard to get back into the coaching mode. How is it like obviously working with the jumpers and the pole vaults? Yeah, um, so pole vault is a tricky event, um, especially when the majority of your pole vaulters are heptathletes or decathletes. 
It's highly technical. Um, you want to spend more time on it with them than you sometimes are allotted to because they have so many events to train for. Um, but the, the biggest thing that I keep reminding myself with all my jumpers is that speed is the determining factor in every event in track and field. Um, so if they're fast, then they're going to do well. <laughs> if they understand the basics and they're fast, then they're going to do well. Um, and, and with high jump, I'm pretty excited about this upcoming year. Um, we've had some really great high jumpers this past year, but we have such a solid group, especially on the men's side. Um, something I've never had before where I have three just like stud standout high jumpers and they're all around the same mark. So just to see how they'll progress together will be very, very interesting. Of course, what is that like on competition day and track meet day going and going back and forth between different competitions? Um, I look like a crazy person at track meets because of course high jump is on this end of the track and pole vault is on this end. And sometimes they're going at the same time so I have to sprint back and forth, um, but it, it's really exciting. Um, the weirdest thing I will tell you, and I think other coaches who only coach jumps can relate to this, is that sometimes your events are done in the first chunk of the day at a track meet. And so it's all this hype all at once. And then you just kind of are like, okay, it's done. Now I can just watch some people run. Of course, what is that like, obviously, as you said, having your meets start at the very beginning of the day and then just being able to relax and watch the rest of your team run. Yeah, um, it's strange. Um, I mean, I'd be lying if I didn't say I often miss coaching sprinters. Um, and, and I would for sure coach sprinters again in a heartbeat. I think that um, that's in my future for sure. Um, but I think as a track and field coach, it's super important to um, be well versed in all of the events because you never know um you know a job that you might want might be asking for certain event areas and if you can't coach them then you can't apply for it um i totally just didn't answer your question i just made up some other answer but can you talk about of course the culture that you built for the jump program for wittenberg yeah so um I wouldn't say uh, that there is a full on culture here yet because this is just my second year here. Um, but I think that um, that comes through in the type of kid that I recruit. And that is just a matter of time where um, everybody kind of understands where I'm coming from as a coach. Um, I have kids that I've literally stopped recruiting even though they're phenomenal athletes because their character is just not in line with what I'm looking for. Um, but here, culturally, I think that um, on the men's and women's side, we are on the brink as a team um, of becoming conference championships consistently. Um, we're just in a very, very good place. And uh, last year with the men, I think they started to realize that we can be a dominant factor in the jumps within our conference. And I think this year will be very eye opening, especially because I have a couple pole vaulters that can take down our school records. So I'm excited to see that happen. And I think within the next couple of years, one of our male high jumpers will take down our school record, which also means that they would have to be qualifying for nationals. So, um, of course, what does the recruitment process look like for those prospective student athletes looking to go into, let's say, the throwing side of track and field? Yeah. So, if a if someone wants to is looking at Wittenberg and is a thrower, typically those kids are football players that's a very common denominator <laughs> is that they play football and they also you know throw shot or discus or um, sometimes weight or hammer in high school um, but our recruiting process is the same across all event areas um, we are looking for people first and foremost that can immediately impact our team so can they score in the NCAC um, we are also that process you should you should visit at least three times uh, we typically have an initial visit where you meet with a um, admissions counselor and you get a campus tour and kind of the basics. And then that second visit is in typically an opportunity to meet a professor in your degree of interest um, and the team. Um, the third visit is typically coming out and watching one of our competitions. Uh, so which for us is a popular time is in December. So we have two meets in December. High school kids come out, watch us compete at our home track, which is here behind me. And it's just a good experience for them to see um, 
you know, the coaches in action, um, the athletes in action, and then get to know them and, and kind of what our flow is like here. What is it like, obviously, going on the road and getting to recruit, let's say, the javeling, the throwing, and the shot putting people? Yeah, so um, so our, our throws are interesting. Um, so our assist, other assistant coach, Bree, she's in charge of most of our throws. Um, we split javelin. Um, anybody who is predominantly a, a thrower um, that does javelin works with her. And then anybody who is a jumper sprinter type that does javelin works with me. And then we kind of like meet in the middle, um, mostly because they're coming from two different kind of backgrounds and throwing. One is a little bit more strength and one is a little bit more bendy flexibility and speed. So um, I'm going off on a tangent. I don't, <laughs> I don't even know if I'm answering your questions. I just am just throwing things out there. Of course, what is it like, obviously on the official visit, seeing those prospective student athletes come to Williamburg? Um, it's always interesting to see what their actual personalities are like. Um, a lot of recruiting nowadays is through text message. So there's not a lot of like cold calls anymore. It's just, hey, do you want to come visit? Yes or no? Um, which is actually conveniently a little bit nice, but also you're not sure what they sound like. You know, you don't know what they look like. Are they tall? Are they short? How strong are they? You know, all these things. And so when a student gets on campus and you get to see a little bit more of their personality, for me, that's extremely telling and whether or not that's a kid that um, I, want to, I want to continue recruiting. Um, because I think that first impressions are really important and you can tell a lot um, from a kid and their parents um, if this is the right fit for them. What are some of your future plans on growing the program for Wittenberg? Yeah, so I think just continuing to do what I'm doing, I think I'm bringing in some pretty phenomenal athletes that will be immediate impact scoring athletes for this team. Um, and, and what I would like to see happen here is I would, I would like to be a team where the high jumpers and pole vaulters and multis are so good that other people hate competing against us because we just will have this big group of high jumpers and pole vaulters that are unstoppable. So for me, um, that's what I would like to see happen here. Um, and I would like to win a conference championship. We are very close to that. So if it does not happen this year, I would be shocked if it doesn't happen next year. What advice would you give those high school athletes that are looking to compete in college and track and field? What was that question? What advice would you give high school athletes oh. looking to compete in college? Yeah, so advice. Um, be, the biggest thing is being available uh, communication-wise. Um, I run into a lot of students who are super interested in Wittenberg but they're awful at getting back to you in text messages. <laughs> and, and typically, I mean, sometimes those are kids that actually come here and end up being our student athletes. So um, I think just being available and um, being able to coach yourself a little bit um, and realizing that there are a lot of technical event athletes that don't have a specific coach for that at their high school. They're really highly dependent on volunteers. Sometimes it's, it's too expensive for the school to afford someone and to maybe not be so hard on their high school coaches for that because they're doing their best. Um, and there's a lot that you can teach yourself online. We have access to so much information. Um, so be, a, be able to teach your event. I think um, proprioception is super important and um, the knowledge of your event makes you a better athlete. So that's the advice I would give them. What advice would you have those college track and field players that are looking to compete in college and then go on to compete for Team USA track and field? Yeah, so I've, um, you know, I'm being a Division three coach, we don't get too many guys and gals that go to compete for USA. But if you are somebody that has aspirations for that, you have to work really, really hard. Um, and I know that sounds super generic, um, but hard work really does pay off. And um, you have to, two things I think that are the most important things for any athlete, no matter what division, what goals, what it is. Um, you have to have a strong foundation of strength and power, explosiveness. If you are not strong in the weight room, you are going to struggle to reach your goals. I am very big on that. Um, and then the other one is to be fast. 
to be fast. Of course, we have to be strong as well to be fast, but speed, again, speed is the determining factor in every event in track and field, throws, distance, sprints, obviously, jumps. And so if you can be, work on your craft on being very fast and very strong, I think other things get easier. And that's when you see the big marks. That's when you see the good stuff. What advice would you have those high school coaches looking to go from high school level to college level like you did? I would say um, put yourself out there um, and, and just apply for the job because I give a lot of credit to high school coaches. Some, Most of the high school coaches that I talk to, um, they know way more than they give themselves credit for. And you're dealing with an athlete when they're going through puberty and they are, they are, they are completely changing from freshman year all the way to their senior year. And so being able to craft, a, you know, practice sessions and training for the diff, different types of kids that you have who are, maybe there's some that are a little bit more social and that's what it's, it is for them and other kids who are taking it a little bit more seriously. I think that high school coaches, they just become so well-versed at so many things because they have to. And they would be great college coaches. I think sometimes I'm assuming that maybe there's this, well, you know, maybe I'm not good enough to get this job, but I think there's a lot of high school coaches that know a lot more than they give themselves credit for. So I would just put yourself out there and apply for a job, see what happens. What advice would you have those future college coaches looking to get started in coaching on the college track field side? What events would I suggest them to coach? Mm -hmm. Um. I think you have to have a basic understanding of sprints, um, in my opinion, um, and what that periodization looks like and, and what general prep phase looks like all the way to championship phase. Just a general idea of what that should look like. And then I think that kind of sets everything else up um, for the other events. Um, but then to also not be scared to just, no pun intended, jump in to coach jumps because you have to learn somehow, right? Like. You're, you're not just going to magically know one day because you read a book. And I promise you, no book is really going to explain <laughs> coaching to a T because every kid is different. Um, but I think, yeah, understanding the sprints to me would be the most important. That's great advice. Where can my listeners find you at on social media along with the Wittenberg Track and Field program at? Yeah, so we are on Instagram primarily. Um, we're not on Facebook. Um, so Instagram would be the place to go to find information. We actually have a link on there for recruits to fill out a recruiting questionnaire and that goes directly into our recruiting database. Um, so we'll get those in an email. Um, and then for, for myself personally, um, I'm on Instagram. I'm, I'm everything that I go by is fit by Jesse and that all comes from my, <laughs> my background in personal training. Um, but yeah, I would say Instagram is the best way to find us. Thank you again, Coach Jesse, for your interview and best of luck in your future as the track and field assistant coach at Wittenberg. Absolutely. Thank you. You can find Brandon Sports Talk on Facebook at Brandon Sports Talk, Instagram at Brandon Sports Talk, Twitter at Talk underscore Brandon. And you can find me on YouTube at Brandon Sports Talk. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you again, Coach Jesse, for your interview and best of luck in your future. Absolutely. Thank you. You've been watching Brandon Sports Talk. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe to Brandon Sports Talk on social media and on YouTube.